Greetings. Greetings, nerds. Uh, my name is Sigflops and Aslabel, also known as Assembly Assembly, and today is Wednesday, which means I'm filling in once again uh, for, me, uh, for, for Micah. And um, so, a rumor has it that Micah is going to be returning um, sometime after fall. So you can expect to see him then, and uh, at that time, I suppose I will bid you all farewell. This week's topic is uh, story time. That's the name of the topic about stories. And I have a bit of a story to tell. Um, Kinda. I don't know how much of a story it is, but um, before I do this, um, perhaps some housekeeping. Shouts to Chris, who um, comments on all my videos. That's actually really nice. It makes me feel really good. In my last video, there's these two people, these two, two extra people, after the four comments that I got that also said they liked my videos, and I was going to give them shouts. I suppose I am in a way, aren't I? But I was going to give them shouts by name, and so I looked back there to see what their names were, and uh, the comments disappeared. So I don't know, I don't know where, where those went, I don't know who deleted them, be it um, the people who comment them, commented on, comment, put them on there, or, or another member, which another member is kind of unlikely. I suppose, suppose it could happen. And uh, so I, I decided to uh, download all the gender queer chat videos, which amounts to about 20 gigabytes. And right now I'm in the process of, of converting them um, to kind of a homogenized format and, and leveling all the audio and, and whatnot, which um, takes about six days because... My computer's rather slow, and uh, so it's it's kind of chugging away, and eventually these will all be the same format and size and whatnot, and they'll kind of go together well, and they'll be easy easier to deal with because you can just copy the codec as, as opposed to re-encoding. And uh, so, if if anyone has any ideas what to do with all the gender chat video gender gender queer chat videos, let me know. Can't really think of anything. I was thinking about making a DVD set um, to give to um, some queer organizations here to, to give out to people because it, I'm, I'm sure it'll be helpful videos to, to people and uh, so yeah if you have any ideas let me know story time um, okay so um, a number of years ago I, I was homeless and uh, like homeless homeless and um, um, like living under bridges, um, sleeping on rooftops and in stairwells, and all, all sorts of places, and, uh, which was an interesting time in my life. Um, during that time, I, I met, uh, these couple of people, Fire and Moochie, who I still keep in contact with every once in a while, and Fire, um, was telling me about this right awesome squat that they used to have in St. Paul. Where the old knitting factory was, this building downtown, completely empty, just for them, and uh, which was awesome. I think they lived there for three years, and, and so we decided to go and, and visit it and see what's going on. And it turns out that the entire thing, when they got kicked out, they made it into uh, condos, and the entire thing got turned into condos. And in the lobby of this, this building with everyone who owns a condo there, everyone walking past this lobby, whenever they need to go anywhere, come back from anything, they go through this lobby, and in this lobby is uh, all the old knitting equipment, all the old knitting factory machinery that was drugged down from wherever it was, and put here on display. And uh, so we were looking at that, and, and uh, fire... <laughs> So, apparently, uh, one of these machines they used as a toilet, because that's, um, you, sometimes you have to do that, and, uh, so there's this one bit of machinery that had, like, this bull thing in the bottom that they, that was their toilet, and was cleaned up and proudly put on display for all these people to see, completely unbeknownst to them that this was fire in Moochie's toilet for three years. Um, I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, so, so a while after this, I met this woman uh, named Amelia and started living with her. And that sort of 
brings a close to that part of my life. And I was living with Amelia for a while and uh, decided that I probably should break up with her. And so I, I broke up with her. She, there was, there was something I couldn't give her. She needed more of me than I had to give. And there was a certain hole in her heart that I could by no means fill. And so when she broke up, when we broke up, um, she, um, she got really angry about it and, uh, was like, all right, you're leaving now and called the cops. Like, I, I'm fine with leaving now. Don't, call, like, don't get the police involved. But she got the police involved. And, and I don't know, she kind of became a little bit unpredictable in my mind. So I've kind of been avoiding her. And I knew that she wasn't mad at me necessarily. I mean, a little bit. But it seems more her anger was so disproportionate. It had to have been directed towards some figure in her past. Towards, um promises broken in her past Th towards you know what i mean like when someone gets really really fucking angry at you and there's no rational reason for them to it's hard to be angry back just at least for me um so yeah but i still was a little bit af afraid of her and so i didn't really see her that much after after we broke up and I learned very recently that she died. She passed away in April. When I knew her, she um, she was an alcoholic and abused painkillers. And when she died, well, she died from a an overdose of fentanyl, this patch that you put on your on yourself, and it's uh, mostly meant for cancer patients. Um, so she, she died from that. She died trying to kill the pain which is kind of sad. But she was living to die. She, um, her life was full of misery. So, um, so she's in a better place, most definitely. When we went to her funeral, her wake rather, um, she was cremated. Um, we went to her wake and, uh, the three of us who knew her personally, and I brought my friend, Mai, as uh, support. And uh, so we came in, and uh, her family was there. All these people who, some of us kind of knew some of them, but none of us knew all of them. All these people who we didn't even recognize, who we felt in no way or in a very little way was a part of her life. Mostly no way. Her parents uh, um, um, raised her up by passing her to other people. Um, so, yeah, we didn't know these people. And uh, I, we couldn't believe that we're the only people there. Out of everyone who knew her, we were the only ones there, and we were the only queer-looking people in the lot, and everyone was giving us the fucking stink eye. And, uh, I don't know, like, it's, it's sort of a protectionary measure. I don't notice too much when people give us or me the stink eye. I just try to generally ignore it. Uh, but my friend noticed it, um, and, and she definitely brought it up with us. Um... Yeah, so, uh, you know, the eulogy came, the eulogies came, or eulogy, I don't know how you say that one, but they all used, they're using her old name. She's a trans woman. She, they were using her old name, using the wrong pronouns. The pictures that they had put up in memory of her were these pictures of her that, well, we didn't even recognize the person in them. Of course, she was really protective of, of her her childhood and didn't show anyone pictures. And so in her life, perhaps, there was a bit of a disconnect between her life as she died, uh, how it was, and her life, her childhood. But, you know, that aside, still, don't refer to someone by their old name. And don't use the wrong pronouns. In their in their fucking wake. That's the most disrespectful thing in the world. And we were looking at all these people. 
and and the fact that we were so different was tangible. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure what to say on that, but we felt as if, you know, in us stands a piece of her spirit, and in you lies her memories, or his memories, as you would have it. And, uh, so yeah, we brought this up with, with someone there, and uh, she said, oh, well, we all have our own memories. I'm not sure how to take that. I still don't really know how to take that. I mean, I can understand we all have our own memories. I still thought it was disrespectful, though, and I was reminded of that scene in Stone Butch Blues where Jess, I believe the main character's name was Jess, it's been some years since I've read it, Jess. Well, one of the butches uh, where she would hang out died. And her family was burying her in a dress. Something that they've never seen her in. Something that she would never wear. You know, the second she died, they treated her body as if it were a doll. Which is the feeling I got from these people with Amelia's wake. The second she died, they treated her like she was a fucking doll. And dressed her up. And I'm glad she was um, cremated because we didn't get to see what they would do to her body. And I'm glad she was cremated because, well, I'm sure her family hated the fact because uh, her mother especially, because she can't go over to her grave and cry, and pretend she was a good mother. Um, so all the other butches in Stone Butch Blues decided that to respect this, they would all wear dresses too. And apparently Jess didn't get the memo, and, and Jess came in wearing a suit, because that's, that's what Jess is comfortable with. And uh, so everyone was like, Oi, no, no, now you're making us feel horrible. No, why are you not wearing a dress? Yeah, I was re reminded of that. So, rest in peace, Amelia. Rest in peace. I guess that's all I have to say. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. And perhaps my story was a little bit depressing, but <laughs> um, maybe I'll come up with a maybe I'll, I'll I'll tell you guys another story that's that's happy and exciting in the future. We'll see. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.